Hey guys, so a few of you have been asking me what I think about this Ubuntu uh, data collection uh, thing that, that's come about recently. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about it and, and my thoughts on it, which aren't particularly in-depth, but uh, you know, you guys asked. So for those of you that don't know, um, Canonical and Ubuntu, for the next long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is going to be 18.04, uh, they want to basically collect some um, system data, for example. Uh, in fact, I've got a um, OMG Ubuntu post up here, which I'll of course link to in the description which does give uh, a lot more details on, on the uh, on the situation. Uh, here we go. So which version of Ubuntu you're using, network connectivity, hardware stats, device vendor, country, uh, how long your install took to complete, auto login, you know, and, and a few sort of things like that, third party codex updates, that stuff. Uh, they say that they're not taking IP addresses and they say that the, the data is anonymized, right? Um, and it, that it's an opt-out process. So if you don't want to send this data over to Canonical and Ubuntu servers, you're going to have to uncheck a box, presumably during the installation process. I don't think there's much information on what the opt-out process involves. So um, a few people have, have been... Um, yeah, well, a few people have a few different opinions on this kind of thing, um, and they range basically from this is not an unreasonable request, why not, to um, this is um, this is a big step backwards. And I um, and to me, it comes down to to one essential point. And I actually I'd just like to tangent quickly. And there's another article on OMG Ubuntu, of course, I'll link to that in the description below, that says that people who are upgrading um, will be opt in. So that is, if, if you're upgrading from a previous version of Ubuntu, then um, then uh, your you know your the the process is opt-in. Now, I obviously would prefer the policy to be opt-in, and I think generally people would like. I have zero issue with helping out Canonical and Ubuntu with these kind of with this kind of information on a voluntary basis. But um, but yeah, the fact that it's opt out. Now, Debian do a similar thing as I understand it. I recognize in the Debian installation process, it does ask, again, to to send back some system information. Um, but that's an, an opt-out process, and it asks you explicitly. So to me, how, what this comes down to is uh, to, to make... To, to how easy is it to opt-out? Like, is it just simply, are they going to explicitly ask you in the installation process... You know, we're, we're going to share some data about your system. Uh, if you don't want that, please deselect this box. Um, or is it going to be something like, you know, a comment out a line in the config file? So, you know, like an opt out isn't an opt out. So, um, I think, you know, before I, I come down on any strong opinion with this, I, I would want I would want to see it in action. Um, so, I might come back to this when, like, a beta or maybe even an alpha of um the system is out um you don't usually get alphas of the vanilla ubuntu do you but or not all the time no you don't um, i don't know i'll have to come back to that but yeah uh yeah i think it's it's really it's all about how what the what the what the opt out process is like how easy it is how difficult it is uh determines you know how bad of it you know how, how bad this is um but for, for those of you that um that feel that this crosses a line i'm quite certain that uh, a large number of the ubuntu based um, derivatives will not have this enabled i don't think mintle will have this enabled by default uh, usually when canonical and ubuntu make a controversial decision such as this because they, they make this like every lts is one controversial decision or another uh, linux mint often take that as an opportunity to scoop up the the bailing users uh, or the users bailing on ubuntu for for such a decision so the, you know like um linux mint often make um, decisions uh, which imply, imply the antithesis to what Ubuntu is doing, and um, and and Linux Mint have have, have built up a decent community, uh, you know, largely around sort of Ubuntu, but a little bit more how the community likes it, I think. So anyway, yeah, uh, sorry about the meandering thoughts on what is effectively a reasonably straightforward opinion, but um, obviously I would prefer this to be an opt-in thing. It does say in the article here, and I think uh, Canonical and Ubuntu have said that it the people just wouldn't opt in if it was an opt in thing. It's not the kind of thing people opt in opt in into. Um, but if they reckon if they if they make it opt out, that should um, that you know that'll that'll benefit them more, and they don't see it as too much of a 
uh, infringement on your rights. But again, I think it depends on the opt out process. If it's easy to opt out, if it's just a if it's just a tick tick box in the installer, that's fine. If the, if it asks you explicitly, gives you its own screen kind of thing, even better. But just as long as it's a clear, you know, uh, it, there is a clear and easy way to opt out. I, um, you know, this is this is uh, tolerable. I think uh, it's not as bad as, for example, the um, the time when they embedded Amazon searching uh, into the Unity dashboard. So the Amazon would have a, 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 a history of what you searched on your dashboard. That's like, this is nowhere near as bad as that. So yeah, I think all in all, um, it's not the worst thing Ubuntu have done. And if Ubuntu have survived some of the, you know, Amazon gate, then it can, uh, then, then it'll, 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 you know, this, this, this is like, there are some people I've heard a few people saying, oh, is this the end of Ubuntu? And it's like, no, no. A, a lot of the time, like Ubuntu has been like a, a popular distribution like the basically the most popular desktop distribution and uh, a lot of people think well there's you know usually another one comes along by now to to dethrone the champion but but it hasn't like ubuntu seems to be this you know sometimes it's um you know it's a red hat or sometimes it's a it's a suit or something like that where you know like the most popular distribution but ubuntu's been a popular be, being sort of the de facto um, easy to use desktop Linux distribution for quite some time now, and I think a lot of people are expecting it to to make a move that will take it out of the race. But um, as Plato says, what was was and will never be again. Uh, it seems. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching, um, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon. Toodaloo. Hey guys, this is just the end screen, so I'm going to promote some things. Uh, feel free to follow me on Mastodon uh, if you want to talk Linux with me. I'm on linuxrocks.online, in my opinion, the best Mastodon server. Also, I'm developing a NeoCities website which lists uh, my favorite applications and websites. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well, and I'm going to be updating that uh, on an ongoing basis. So if you want to see various apps and websites that I recommend, uh, yeah, link in the description. And for those of you that would like to see me in a slightly less technical capacity, I've got another channel where I play games with a few friends of mine called Project Chronicle. I will, of course, link that in the description below. Toodaloo.